I'm nominating Julia Rees and Hannah Coben for the Creative Team of the Year Award. This is because during the last year, they have overcome barriers enforced by the global pandemic, which has resulted in the inevitable challenges for students finding quality work placements. Julia and Hannah were innovative in their approach to supporting their students by setting up their own simulated virtual placement under the company name Coben and Rees Conveyancing. This enabled 55 second year LLB law students to undertake a two week placement. These students benefited from gaining new work based skills as well as boosting confidence and had a fantastic experience, which has been truly inspirational. We've had many situations where sort of lecturers or students have you know, been in a particular situation and uh, have not kind of known how to resolve it. And Pete's the first one in with you know, a suggestion or, or a way that we can complete the task uh, in, in realistic terms and, and time frames. Um, I, I mean, particularly during the pandemic when the drama uh, students kind of, were kind of working out the best way uh, for them to deliver their end of year shows or their, their plays. And Pete came up with a, a whole uh, sort of like new working uh, strategy uh, for this situation. He took the time to teach them the software, uh, to guide them then of how to deliver their plays via the software. He managed them whilst they were rehearsing and it, it enabled that course to successfully deliver their end year projects uh, and, and have something respectful and substantial to show to sort of like future employers. He's a very approachable, uh, kind uh, and uh, full of encouragement uh, colleague and uh, uh, instructor at the university. Uh, and I think, um, you know, recognition uh, where recognition is due and, and I really recognise uh, Pete's um, talents and, and, and the support he, he, he gives us all. And I just want to say, Thanks, Pete. I think you do deserve uh, to, uh, a star, because you're our star. Take care, buddy. Although COVID-19 has caused disruption to usual working practices across the university, the UK student recruitment and recruitment events teams have shown that they are agile, responsive and creative, not to mention collaborative and inspiring. In my view, they've truly brought the university's core values to life. The USW student recruitment team traditionally delivers vital HE information, advice and guidance to prospective students in schools and colleges throughout the UK. With schools and colleges locked down in March 2020, the UK student recruitment team pivoted quickly and devised alternative and creative ways to reach out to their stakeholders. Within a week of national lockdown and homeworking, the team had produced a plethora of digital resources. Through sheer determination, hard work and grit, they've taught themselves new skills and have quickly become expert users of multiple digital platforms to support recruitment activity. The recruitment events team also evolved with the changing times. With the cancellation of on-campus physical events, the team quickly transitioned to a model of online events working with several teams across MSR to create engaging events which are accessible to prospective students, parents and guardians from home. Leading these teams through a pandemic has made me incredibly proud. I've never witnessed such resilience and an enthusiasm to continually be creative in reaching out to our audiences in new and alternative ways. Emma's known to many of you, I think, as the USW Student Enterprise Manager, and she brings to that role huge passion, flair, and uh, commitment, knowledge, and skills. Emma's been working in the enterprise uh, field for uh, at least a decade and has a great passion and commitment to the cause. 
She uh, works collaboratively across the university, both with USW Exchange on the Women Entrepreneurship Programme, but also with colleagues in USW Startup Studio, as well as across the faculties with particular reference to the Faculty of Creative Industries. Emma is well known in the sector and well regarded. She has huge knowledge and capability. She inspires others, particularly in her work as a director on the board for um, Enterprise Educators UK. She really does bring sort of an inclusivity to her uh, work. And we feel that she's somebody who has huge potential. And we're really proud of the work that she does, both in terms of representing enterprise education, graduate startup, freelancing, as well as the work that she does in rolling her sleeves up and getting involved on the sort of boot camps, the Bright Ideas Den, uh, mentorship programmes. And we really feel she's deserving of this uh, nomination and shortlist. When the pandemic hit, Debbie was, or still is, my catering coordinator at Crochets and Sport Park. We asked for volunteers to come in and support other departments through a very difficult time. Debbie volunteered to come in on a daily basis to help accommodation during the time of uncertainty when the COVID hit. She provided support for the team professionally. She would distribute mail to the students. She'd help deliver meals. She'd even come in on a Saturday to record cases of COVID for us to make sure we were up to date with how the pandemic was affecting our students. She never complained, she came in every day with the steady determination to make things better for the students and the staff at USW. We're all incredibly proud of Debbie and we're proud to have her as part of our team. Well, quite simply, she's an exceptional lecturer who cares passionately about her students and their success. Rebecca joined USW as a lecturer in 2015 after studying both ACCA and ICAW qualifications with us while working in accounting practice. Rebecca showed immense enthusiasm and talent from the off. She's continued to demonstrate an exceptional level of pastoral care for students. And she's also managed to find time recently to write a number of articles for students on how to succeed in studying for, for professional accounting exams. The real proof of the pudding, of course, is in student feedback. And I don't think I've ever seen any better. The positive sentiments simply jump off the page going the extra mile, nothing is too much trouble, the best lecturer I've ever had. It really is heartwarming to read. In our highly complex team, Charlotte's been the epitome of the professional, always looking ahead and around corners to try and anticipate what infrastructure people will need, using contacts and creativity to source and implement solutions, undertaking valuable CPD to harness the potential of digital tools, and gently but firmly ensuring our work is regulation compliant. And all the while, explicitly supporting our well-being and teamness. So specifically, Last year, Charlotte has introduced regular wellbeing touch points and team connectiveness spaces that have been hugely valued by staff and may well have been overlooked as essential activity without Charlotte's explicit proactivity. And across the year, there have been innumerable occasions when her thinking outside of the box has been critical to finding effective solutions to challenges while the others in the team have rushed on supporting staff with the COVID pivot. Charlotte's professionalism has been truly remarkable. Her patience, insight, creativity, honesty and ability to challenge and advise has been invaluable. Without Charlotte, I'm sure that Celt would not be as strong as it is today, nor have come through the 2021 academic year with even better infrastructure and staff support systems than we had before. The Security Incidents Response Team is a virtual team that brings together individuals with the expertise required to combat cyber threats 
Over the last academic year, we have seen a sharp rise in the number of attacks against the sector as a whole and the USW itself. Nevertheless, the team has been there at a time of need, which often means waking up at night, working through the night or even sacrificing weekends to protect and secure the university. Their commitment and dedication is what makes them stand out. They are the unsung heroes working in the background in some of the most stressful environment you would face, but their due diligence and professionalism prevails to carry them forward to defend and respond as required, to enable the university to continue operating. I remain extremely grateful for their sense of professionalism, which has been tested time and time again over the last academic year. And I am so proud to be working alongside every one of them. In early 2020, the timetabling team, following a difficult 2019, had settled and were building on the previous year's experience, looking at forging improved relationships and enhancing different working practices, keeping student and staff experience at the centre. Extensive work had begun on the September 2020 timetable when the pandemic first hit. However, by May 2020, when the true extent of how education was impacted was realised, it became apparent that the scheduling team would need to rebuild the entire timetable to face COVID-19 challenges. They rebuilt a timetable that would normally take five months to build in nine weeks by working above and beyond expectations in a collegiate way and with the utmost professionalism. The impact of their positivity and desire to deliver what the university needed is evident from the extensive feedback received from across the institution. This is their response to adversity that we most admire. Learning from the past year, they have embraced a more agile approach and are planning the most effective ways to meet the challenges of the 2030 strategy. Andy Jackson started working as Recruitment Events Manager at USW on 30th of March 2020, just seven days after nationwide lockdown due to COVID-19. Andy has never once complained about the situation, from his virtual induction to the limited equipment available to him. Andy has taken it all in his stride and has embraced the challenge. And Andy, who had never run virtual events before in previous roles, was thrown in at the deep end and was expected to plan, organise and deliver a suite of online open days, virtual postgraduate open evenings, online admissions interviews and digital clearing events in the space of a few weeks. Indeed, Andy quickly became known as the USW expert in MS teams for delivering live events and was approached by the executive team to help them deliver USW town hall events. Andy is the off-screen face behind the VC and other executive members who ensure that the USW town halls run smoothly. Nothing is too much trouble for Andy. He goes above and beyond every single time and never fails to deliver. He is always positive and delivers service with a smile. He has been a breath of fresh air in these challenging times. He has motivated and mobilised his team who are also now experts in online delivery of recruitment events. Andy is a committed, passionate and loyal member of staff and I feel very lucky to have him as part of my team. Andy has transformed USW's recruitment events and I am very proud of him. I'd like to nominate the States and Facilities as Responsive Team of the Year because of the fantastic effort many in the department undertook during the COVID-19 pandemic. The team supported our staff and students in a number of ways. Colleagues in accommodation provided care and support for those students in our halls of residence who couldn't return home very early in the pandemic and throughout the period. Our catering teams provided packages of care for those students self-isolating and maintained facilities open through much of 2020 and 21. 
and colleagues in sport provided alternative venues for elite and professional sport when their own facilities couldn't reopen when we were in the midst of the pandemic. Our maintenance teams across our sites throughout USW provided that important support to ensure our buildings were compliant and safe for our students and staff. Our projects and space team replanned and reorganised every building across our campuses to ensure that it was socially distanced and again safe for our staff and students. Thank you to all those who supported us throughout the pandemic within the state's facilities. In late 2020, with only a few weeks notice, the university was required by government to create its own in-house COVID-19 testing facility in order to test students for the infection as they returned to our campuses. With no prior experience of running a clinical operation, the team got to work very quickly, putting in many hours over weekends, evenings and holidays. No hands-on help was available from government and the creation of the testing centre was achieved only through learning gained from manuals and online facilities. The build, organisation and operation of the facility had to be regularly reviewed to make sure it was conforming to strict clinical standards and was safe. At the same time, it had to be able to handle hundreds of students and staff who required tests. Every member of the team has pulled together to make sure the outcome could be achieved, from digesting hundreds of pages of instructional information to organising logistics, kit and equipment. The effort has been beyond what anyone could have expected. The contribution the team have made to a COVID-secure campus has been immense allowing a level of education and operation which would not otherwise be achieved. This outstanding achievement against all the odds, in which Katrina and her team have gone well above and beyond what could have been expected, is worthy of the highest recognition. I put in a nomination for the whole of academic registry this year because I just felt that in such exceptional situation as the pandemic, it was almost impossible actually to single out individuals uh, for recognition when so many have achieved so much, uh, delivered so much, sacrificed so much and learned and adapted uh, in such a way that they've done so uh, supporting each other and really I think what has impressed me the most is the way that colleagues have really pulled together and helped each other and really demonstrated the university's values. Quietly but effectively in academic year 2021, CAF's collaborative skills, building open, trustful networks and safe spaces for disruptive and critical thinking, have enabled significant relationships to be built within and between USW departments. These relationships that would not have happened without her vision, initiative and support are now themselves producing powerful collaborative outputs that are having positive reputational impact for USW. As we know, equality and equity are both a legal and moral obligation to individuals and institutions. And the complexity of the agenda and the busyness of people's everyday work can sometimes be an excuse for people to put the equality agenda on the back burner for another day. But using her expertise and passion for collaboration, Kath has built numerous deliberate project groups spanning USW's agenda. For example, the University of Sanctuary and Migration and Refugee Studies and another for decolonizing the curriculum. These groups and others are now visible and vocal at USW, enabling local and broader conversations and change. Thank you, Kath, for your expertise, persistence and commitment to enabling USW to fulfil its ambitions with equality and equity at its heart.
Printed design worked closely with estates and facilities throughout the summer 2020 to ensure all of our sites were safe for our staff and students. The team put in place thousands of safety measures in a really quick time frame to protect all those on USW sites. The whole team was supportive through the design process and the installation. Despite the challenging volume of work, the entire print and design team worked collaboratively with states, providing creative expertise and being supportive throughout with a smile on their face. Thank you. With the advent of the COVID-19 pandemic and the move to online and blended learning, it became critical that students were provided with the tools to support their own transition, even when studying from home. I nominated my team for developing online resources called Your Student Journey to support student transition into university through multiple entry points and across each level of study. These have been designed for students to either methodically work their way through or dip in and out of as required. By creating these tools, we sought to streamline transition resources and service delivery into one accessible place. In terms of internal impact, these resources were included in the Getting Ready to Learn module, which was pushed out to all new and returning students to support their transition into and through university. And we also had some external impact. In May 2021, the Department for Higher Education wrote to universities requesting useful resources which are likely to support student preparedness for HE, either in an academic sense or support sense. USW's Head of Recruitment championed these resources by forwarding them to be included as examples of best practice. This was a great opportunity for not only the Progression Advice Team, but for the university to showcase its expertise in this space. My team astounded me every day with their commitment to their role and to our students. And I am as proud as I could be to nominate them for this wonderful work that they have done to support our students. Welcoming students back to campus amid the COVID-19 pandemic introduced a responsibility in relation to the Public Health Wales Track, Trace and Protect process. USW set out to monitor individuals who tested positive for COVID-19 for the purpose of mitigating action, offering support directly to those affected and providing reassurance to the USW community, Public Health Wales and Welsh Government as an integral component to USW's aim of keeping people safe, keeping learning going. The USW Student COVID Response Team, consisting of people from across USW, was organised in a dynamic shifting environment. Essential information assets were created and distributed through a variety of platforms and robust systems for data capture and reporting were required. Students testing positive for COVID and those needing to self-isolate were offered regular wellbeing calls, recognising the likely impact on them. Often the COVID response team would establish a relationship with the student leading to referral to other USW support such as funding or digital hardship. In a proactive initiative to support students experiencing loneliness and isolation during the Christmas and Easter breaks, students residing in halls of residence at Forest, plus others directly referred, were contacted as a courtesy and to offer support. The contact callers and the nurse advisors have been pivotal in recognising and acknowledging any students of concern and are quick to refer to the wellbeing service for professional support. The work of the COVID response team has been an integral part of the USW success in preventing the spread of the virus on campus and in social groups. The Academic Skills Tutor Team created an online learning resource called Articulate, 
which was piloted to nursing students in the Faculty of Life Sciences and Education. It has created an opportunity for students to develop and practice their academic writing skills and to introduce them to the expectations for writing at HE level. The course numbers were large and the usual offer and resource would have been extremely stretched to provide the level of support required within their first six weeks in the middle of a very full study programme. The PDF was created condensing existing material to form an asynchronous learning resource. The aim was for students to be able to work independently using the document to guide good practice. A writing community was created using Teams as a platform to give students the opportunity to explore their writing and share it with each other. This was invaluable in being able to provide the second layer of support, synchronous weekly sessions for students to share their experiences by interacting with one another and a tutor. Seven groups ran simultaneously for three weeks, followed by another seven, with the same repeated for the January intake. Students gained in confidence throughout the experience and engagement was high, with most students uploading work, sharing comments and feedback. In the first cohort, the non-submission rate decreased to almost zero, with only a handful of students handing in late. Two months after completing their three-week learning experience, students were still accessing the materials. The department were happy with the results from the pilot and wish to continue it with new cohorts. It is also being adapted to suit other programmes at USW. Thank you very much for our nomination for the Star Award for the creation of Colburn and Reese, the virtual firm that we created to cater to our students' needs to continue to enhance their employability through COVID. It was something that nearly killed us, um, but we're really, really glad that we've done it. And the reaction from the students has been phenomenal. Well, I didn't really know how well it's gone until we had the feedback. And one of the feedback um, comments that somebody left that really stuck in my mind was, this is the memory they're going to take with them from US mm. time at USW. So I thought that was really good. And some of the feedback was amazing. And it really made a difference to people at such a hard time, you know, during COVID. Yeah, psychologically as well. It allowed the students to have that student experience to come together and to really experience being a student, albeit through employability and through being an employee. It gave them that unity. It gave them the identity that um, being part of the USW family continued, even though they were learning from their own homes. The challenge was a significant one for USW. We received over £7 million of funding to distribute to our students and therefore the, the team put together to, to try and make that work involved colleagues right across the institution and required us to think collaboratively and creatively. We needed to work out how we were going to do it, what platform would be best and how we would collect the information from students that we needed to assess their eligibility for funding. Therefore we had to create significant data sets, work out the range of students who were automatically eligible for the funding against a set of demographics and then look at students' need in terms of application for the funding itself. In finding the platform that took us some time and gave us some challenges, not least uploading thousands and thousands of data lines to our bankers who, who administered, the, administered the spend for us. In doing that, uh, that of course created some alarm in the student body, so communication, particularly through our student union, was vital. Uh, students felt that uh, an email arriving in their inbox offering them some free cash might not be genuine. Our colleagues were involved from our registry in terms of the data, from IT services, in terms of how we got the money to students and how we collected the information we needed. Our student services team in supporting students planning team in liaison with our partners um, and also the reporting requirements that were in place to monitor the spend, uh, also our student union and our communications team. It was a significant challenge, it showed to us that we can work creatively, collaboratively as a team and make something happen in a, in a relatively short period of time. We were successful in, in distributing 99% of that funding and it was important to us that we also gave as much money as we could to students and not create an administrative burden that meant some of the cost would be borne by, by the institution and therefore detract from the funding we were able to distribute.
I nominated David Phillips for the Star Award and I nominated him for, for three reasons. One, for his pastoral work with the students. Uh, he's the third year tutor and we have a lot of students coming in from the colleges for whom it's their first experience and entering higher education. He provides a lot of one-to-one -one support and contact to help them work through kind of barriers and challenges they might be facing. Um, also issues involving neurodiversity, uh, mental health, and he, he spends a lot of time working really hard with the students on these issues. Second, he's been doing a lot of work on decolonizing the curriculum and trying to get other approaches in, which comes from his vast experience working on equality issues, his work in equality at the institution, trying to get different voices and, and more diversity of range of opinions um, and scholars into the curriculum that we're doing. And then as a colleague, he's a great team player. He always pulls in and helps out where he can. And he's been an amazing asset to, to the masters on which I am course leader. And uh, I really couldn't do most of the things I do without David. Thank you for joining us for the awards. I hope you've enjoyed watching all of the videos, looking at all the nominations we've had. Thank you to everybody who's nominated and thank you to everybody, of course, who's been shortlisted for today. I look forward to seeing more of you around and about the campus this year and talking about how we work together for more excellence in the future. <laughs>